I'll be feeling sorry for myself, right? And when I got, first got home from prison, can't get a job anywhere. And then Yoko Ono calls to see how I'm doing. Seriously. Or um, I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe I'll get into radio, which is what I do now mostly. Maybe I'll get into radio and then Oliver Stone calls to ask if I can be the technical advisor on some film he's doing. It's the craziest, weirdest thing. Wow. What did Oliver Stone call you about? Oh, my God. Oliver, Oliver bought the rights to my first book. It's kind of a funny story if you have a minute to listen to I it. I got plenty of minutes. So Oliver bought the rights to my first book. I've written nine books so far. And um, he wanted to do this show on what it was like inside the CIA the day before the 9-11 attacks, the day of the 9-11 attacks, and then the day after and onward where you've got all these really smart, patriotic people who want to do the right thing and serve their country, and then they become torturers, kidnappers, murderers. Like, how does that happen in 48 hours? And it, and it did. That's how it happened. And so um, we actually sold it to the History Channel as a, as a one season. They wanted to do it as a miniseries. And uh, Oliver said he wanted to choose the writer. So we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And we're like, what are you doing? And he said, I can't find the right person. And then History Channel said, just forget it. And they dropped it. Oh, man. Yeah, I was so mad. And then he calls me like two years later. And he said, um, did we sell a show together? And I said, yeah, it was based on my, on my first book. He said, what was that show about? So I told him what I just told you. And he said, right, right, right. Did we write anything and I said, yeah, we wrote the first episode. That's what we gave to, uh, to History Channel. And he says, send me that. I'm looking for something to do. So I sent it back to him. And then he calls me again the next day, and he's like, yeah, I'm not interested in doing this anymore. Really? <laughs> I was like, okay. Wow. Yeah, he's a strange guy. He's hard to get along with. Is he really? Yeah. Intra, I bet because I followed his uh, I followed his documentaries that he did on Ukraine after the whole U oh, Ukraine thing yeah. happened, and I started watching yeah. that. And did you notice like one his documentary got banned from YouTube? Oh yeah, it sure did. Which was wild. Yep, yep. You know what? The, one of the things that I admire about him, and I'm sorry to get so far off subject, but he doesn't care what anybody thinks about him, and I think that's wonderful. It's liberating. Yeah, you know, you do what you think is right if you believe in yourself and you genuinely don't care what people think about you you can accomplish all kinds of stuff well he's been through it I oh mean, my from God. from and being in the, in the vietnam war and all everything all the, the, the work he's done from the history of the mm -hmm. united states and that documentary and he just knows so much i feel like and oh, uh, yeah. it's so weird to me when people you know he obviously has a lot of people who talk you know against his work and say like the yeah. stuff that he says is kind of biased. Yeah, it's he's not a right. propagandist. Very, very anti-American. Mm -hmm. He gets labeled anti-American. He's a patriot. That's the funny thing. He's a patriot who thinks that that there are so many things that the government has done wrong or that the government has done that have been illegal right? or that has been illegal. And he wants to spotlight it, right? And, and bring it to the attention of all Americans. And people say, oh, you hate America. Mm. You know, I don't know if the CIA killed John Kennedy, but Oliver certainly thinks that they did. And he's got some, you know, documents that, I don't know, it kind of makes it seem plausible. Again, I don't know. His new, CIA, his new documentary about that, I don't mm -hmm. know if you've seen it or yeah. not, but it's, yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty matter of fact. It is. It is. I don't even know if that's even considered a conspiracy theory anymore. I think it's pretty much everybody it's knows about it and just well doesn't mainstream. really talk about it. Yeah, yeah, it's very mainstream. Yeah. Um, another thing, like his his Put I, we're getting way off topic here, yeah. but we can we can bring it back. We got time. The the Putin interviews that he did. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's the only guy who spent you know over forty eight hours sitting alone with Putin yes. talking to him about things and getting his point of view. And I thought those mm -hmm. things. I thought that was one of the most fascinating pieces and, of work I've seen. And you see the respect that Putin treated him with too. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he got criticized for not, like, being harder on Putin during the interviews. Like, why didn't you push back harder on, like, when he went on the Colbert show? And he's yeah. like, well, why didn't you challenge him on that or, or talk, you know, put him in line for saying that? And he's like, well, if you're going to 
be in my position in the position of interviewing Putin in the first place, you have to have some sort of respect for him as a, mm -hmm. as a human being and the leader of our country. You can't yeah, just fucking that's right. shit down his throat. That's right. You can't, it's not going to work. It's right. not going to get you anywhere. Right. Um, so what do you, what sort of criticism have you gotten, if any, from your position and from, from what you did? with the CIA as far as like whistleblowing mm -hmm. and, and coming out against the, the, um, that program? It depends. It depends who you talk to. Um, I'll tell you one of the funny things that happened is after my prosecution, two of the FBI agents who were involved in prosecuting me called my attorneys and apologized to them and said that uh, this was a political case they did it because they were ordered to do it, and they just wanted to express their their um, apologies. I said, "No hard feelings, water under the bridge, right?" I mean, I'm I'm sort of a I've come to be a believer in fate, and if this is the way that things were supposed to happen, then this is the way things are supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. You really get to see who your friends are. I'll tell you that uh, when something like this happens. So you know, for the most part, people were like. Oh my God, what you did was so brave. Nobody else had the guts to do it. And then there were a couple of people, like there's a right-wing newspaper in Washington called the Washington uh, Times. Uh, it's owned by the, the Moonies, you know, the, the Reverend Sun Myung Moon and the mm. Unification Church. It's that cult from South Korea. Yeah. Um, so they, they called me a traitor, a bad actor, um, uh, pro uh, terrorist. It's like, yeah, I don't remember you being there when we were kicking down doors and taking down Al Qaeda. So right. I'm pro terrorist, right? Saying that you whistle blew on a <laughs> a torture program right. makes you a pro terrorist. Pro terrorist. You know, my my point has always been very simple that that the American people have a right to know what the government is doing in their name. And it is illegal. We actually have a law in this country. It is illegal to classify something that is a crime. You cannot put a classification on something for the purpose of keeping it from the public. And so we're, we're signatories to the United Nations Convention Against Torture, right? We were the authors, actually, of the United Nations Convention Against Torture. And we have a law in this country called the Federal Torture Act of 1946, which specifically outlawed exactly those things that we were doing against uh, or doing to Al-Qaeda prisoners. Mm -hmm.